Sairam. It was 1994 or 1995 and all the students across the educational institutions of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba in Puttaparthi were in a state of excitement. Why? Because Swami had called everyone for a PC session. For the uninitiated, the PC stands for Purna Chandra, the largest pillarless auditorium in Asia back then, which is right beside the Darshan grounds in Puttaparthi. And a PC session or a Purna Chandra session meant a private interview with Swami for all the students, because it would just be Swami and students and Swami would speak, the students would speak, the students would sing, Swami would sing. Swami would often reveal things that he would never do in a public discourse and the students would get a chance on a one-on-one -on -one interaction with Swami and therefore every student looked forward eagerly for this PC session. This day as the students filed into the Purnachandra auditorium, by the way, this Purnachandra auditorium, its construction and how it came about is a fantastic story in itself. That has been covered in detail in this link above. Don't click on it now. After this video, you can click there, go and enjoy that. So as the students filed in to the auditorium, they saw that so many things had been arranged and kept there, so many objects. And they were wondering what this was all about. They understood when Swami came and you know, a hush fell across everyone. Everyone is lost in drinking that beautiful form with their eyes. Swami came down the stage. There is a stage in the Purnachandra auditorium. He walked down the stage, came down and then he picked up one object that had been kept there and threw it to one of the students. It was a canister of shaving foam and this boy became very happy because anything that Swami gives us makes us happy, right? This is an important lesson to remember in life as well. Everything that we have in life is a gift from Swami and we should be happy with that because Swami has given it. And then Swami called some of the senior students and the teachers and told them, take this and distribute it to everyone. There were so many toiletries and other objects kept there and a random distribution began. The teachers and the senior students would pick up whatever object came to their hand and distribute it to whoever student was there. And therefore, right from toothbrushes to shaving brushes to shaving cream, toothpaste, soaps, perfumes, so many things, everything was being distributed. Now, as this distribution began, it was natural that the students would look at what I got versus what others got. Some of them got a puny mere toothbrush, whereas some others got electric shavers. So it was natural that the students who probably got this toothbrush were comparing and thinking how lucky, you know, we just got a toothbrush, <laughs> he's got an electric shaver, how lucky to get an electric shaver. But it is not as if the guy who got the electric shaver was happy because he was looking enviously at the guy who got a perfume bottle and he was thinking, wow, what an expensive gift that is, how nice. If I wish I had also got a perfume bottle, but it was not as if you can get what you want because it was a random distribution going on. So typical like the world today, right? <laughs> All of us get gifts, but we are looking at the gifts that others have, be it in terms of finances, be it in terms of career growth, be it in terms of relationships or possibly the country of residence, whatever. All of us have gifts coming from the same God, but we are always focused on what the other has and we feel envious, we feel jealous, we are not happy, we feel dissatisfied, discontented. And it is not as if the guy who got the perfume bottle was happy because he was thinking that once I start using this, in no time it will be over. This is lasting only for a little time. Whereas the one with the electric shaver, you know, that will last for a lifetime. That's a durable object. Mine gets over. It's a consumable. So you see, basically everyone was unhappy, just as everyone is unhappy in the world. The time was now ripe for the Supreme Lord of the Universe, the Avatar who has come in our midst so lovingly in this beautiful form of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba to give a very important lesson and insight. 
As the distribution progressed and as all the students were busy in their comparisons and contrasting, suddenly fingers began to snap. Now this in student language was an identification that something momentous was happening and we should all focus. So a hush descended on all the students and they saw that Swami who had come down the stage had turned around, walked back, climbed back up the stage and was now exiting. So everybody became alert, hands folded, focused on Swami. Swami turned around and asked, all the boys, have you got gifts? Yes, Swami. Then Swami asked the important question. Tell me boys, who amongst you wants Swami? And then he turned and left. This is a poignant episode narrated by brother Ashok Sundareshan who was present in that session in 1994-95. It teaches us that we have come to the Purna Chandra auditorium, we have come to this world for Swami, to see God. But we get so enamored and lost in the comparisons of the gifts that that very same Swami is giving us that we forget Him. We get distracted because we get attracted by things of the world. Let us not forget God whom we are seeking in quest for the gifts that his hands can give us. That is the most important point we have to keep in mind when it comes to our life. This life is meant for seeking Swami and Swami alone. Nothing else. Swami may shower us with any number of gifts. We are grateful for them. But our focus is Swami. Swami, we want you. Swami, we want you. Swami, we want you. That is the only thing we must seek. How do we seek it? For this, let me share an incident narrated by a younger brother. Brother D. Vamsi Krishna. When he was in grade 8 in 2010, he noticed something strange. Well, before this, you know, what used to happen is when he was in fifth grade itself, he saw that things did not appear very clear for him. Notice boards and, you know, signages, they looked a little blurry. But then he thought, this is how the whole world must be seeing this. So it's okay. It's fine. Even in the classroom, when he would sit, he would not be able to see the blackboard very clearly if he was behind. But he thought that's because the teachers are writing in very small letters and he should sit front. Again, no big deal about it. But one day, he happened to get a seat quiet towards the back during darshan. And as Swami came for darshan, Swami was a blur. He realized that the beloved of his heart, the apple of his eye, wasn't seen clearly. He was looking like a blur. He couldn't make out the features in Swami's face. And this got him very scared, very frightened. The innocent boy went to his teacher and said, Sir, I think I have done some terrible sin. Why do you say so? Because, sir, I am not able to see Swami properly. I don't know what have I done wrong. <laughs> That was when the teacher understood what the problem could be. He made him go back and asked him to read something he could not. And he told him, you foolish fellow, you don't have any sins or anything affecting you. Your eyes, you need spectacles. Go get them checked. And that's how he got his spectacles. When I heard this incident, something snapped within me. I told this brother in my heart, you are so lucky because you felt that anguish when it came to Swami. You did not care when you could not see the world clearly. But if you could not see Swami clearly, you were anguished. Dear brothers and sisters, when we know that we have to seek God, we have to seek God with this intensity. You know, when I lose something in my worldly life, if I lose a relationship or if I lose some money, if I get affected in my career, if I get affected in any of these things, mundane things, my car gets hit in an accident, I get so worried, I pray and so me, let this be fine, let my dog get fine, all these things we pray, we keep asking for. But do I seek Swami? 
Ramakrishna Paramahamsa would every day cry out to the mother. Telling, oh mother, if I don't see you, this whole day is a waste. And one more day has passed and I have not had your darshan. Do I cry like that for Swami? Do I feel that a day is a waste if I don't see Swami? I may not see him physically with my physical eyes, but in my mind's eye, in my heart, do I see him? Do I feel him? This yearning and intensity we need. It is not enough that we seek God. We have to seek God with intensity. There is one more point apart from seeking God with intensity. And for this, let me share a personal experience. When I joined higher secondary school in 1998, my father gifted me a camera with which to take Swami's photographs. I was very, very keen on getting Swami's photograph where he is looking directly at the camera and smiling. Because such a photograph, when you put it up, wherever you may be in the room, it will appear as if Swami is looking at you. So this was my goal. So in my camera with the lens, when I would focus, yes, the first two points that I spoke about here were automatically taken care of. I was seeking only Swami. The subject was Swami. And yes, my focus too was on Swami. I was focusing on Swami. But when I'm doing this, Swami is not looking at me. How can I get that photograph? Correct? We also feel we seek God and we seek God with all intensity. But God is not responding. What to do? This was my problem in photography. Days, weeks, months, Almost a year passed and I didn't have any good photograph to show where Swami is looking into the camera and smiling. How do I get Swami to do that? That is when I got a lucky break. A Christian bishop had come to Puttaparthi to have Swami's darshan. And he was so devoted to Swami that Swami showered so much of love on him. In fact, Swami had a chair placed for him in the portico and told him to sit there every day. And I noticed that every day as Swami completed his darshan rounds and was walking into the interview room, he would look at this bishop and give him a beautiful smile. And that's when I got an idea. <laughs> the next day, I positioned myself right behind the chair of this bishop. I was sitting at the lotus feet of this bishop now, you know. And I was waiting for Swami to come. Swami completed his darshan rounds and as he was going across this bishop to enter the interview room, I got up on my knees and placed my camera lens right above the shoulder of this bishop. <laughs> you know? And there, that was the moment Swami turned and smiled and he definitely knew what I was up to. So he looked at the camera lens as well and that smile and that is how this beautiful image got captured. Dear brothers and sisters, we are seeking Swami. We are seeking Him intensely. But we need to do that with perseverance as well. Shirdi Baba would often say, Shraddha and Saburi. Shraddha is faith, intensity. Saburi is patience, perseverance. Apart from seeking God and seeking Him intensely, we need to persevere with that intensity. There has to be consistency in our sadhana. In his discourse on the 19th of February 2004, the Shivaratri discourse, Swami says, the discourse is titled itself as true sadhana means focusing the mind on God. In that Swami says, people have different understanding of sadhana. Sadhana is nothing but salokyam, samipyam, sarupyam, sayujyam. Salokyam means to be in the same world as the Lord that we are all blessed with. We are on that same planet Earth in that same time when the avatar was on the Earth. Next is Samipyam, to get close to God. That is why we have to seek Swami. Then Sarupyam. Sarupyam is we begin to embody the qualities. We begin to embody the form of God. We become like that. And that happens when we focus on Swami. And finally, Sayujyam. Sayujyam 
is union with Swami and that comes only with consistent persistence. With that intensity, we are seeking God and we do it so consistently that one day we become one at His lotus feet. Dear Swami, may we seek you with all our heart, with all our time, with all our energies for all times to come. With that prayer, we offer our hearts and love to you. Thank you. Jai Sairam.